Hello, hello everyone, my name is Laura, this is my channel Laura's Little Library, and welcome to today's video, which are going to be all of my thriller recommendations. <laughs> So thriller isn't one of my main genres that I read a lot of, but I do very much enjoy reading it, especially during spooky season and in the winter, just cozying up with a good like psychological thriller or murder th slasher thriller horror. It's just so cozy for me. So while like I said, I don't read a ton of it, I do read some of it and it's just perfect for this time of year. So I thought I'd share some of my favorite thriller recommendations for you for this spooky season. So the first book that I would like to recommend is Insomnia and this is by Sarah Pinborough and this is a psychological thriller. So you have your main character who her mom had really bad insomnia and it started at a very specific age. It was like 35 or something like that. And you know with the insomnia her mom kind of started going like seeing things and doing things in the middle of the night and it was just it was very scary and very stressful for her so she is approaching that age that her mom was when she was taken away because of her insomnia and so she is worried if she's gonna show signs of insomnia and how she's gonna react and all those different kinds of things is it all in her head is she imagining it or does she have nothing to worry about and she's just reliving memories as it's coming closer to her birthday it was a very good psychological thriller so if you like those definitely check out insomnia by sarah pinborough I would also recommend, if you have not read this book or any of the other books by this author, I would recommend them. That is The Silent Patients by Alex Michaelides. So Alex Michaelides wrote both The Silent Patient and The Matron? Nah, something like that? I don't know. There is like, it's not a companion novel per se, but there are references from this book in The Maidens by this author, and so I, I read both of them and I did enjoy both of them, but this is the one that I think is a little more like thrillery. The other one is a good murder mystery, but this is a little bit more thriller because you have um, this psychologist who's going to try and get this patient to talk because this patient supposedly murdered her husband or, you know, did something really bad, but she's been silent for a very long time. And so he is trying to figure out her story and what actually happened. I, like I said, I enjoyed this. I just kept wanting to read it. So if you haven't read either of these books, I definitely recommend them. I don't think it really matters which order you read them in, but I read this one first and I'm happy that I read this one first. But like I said, it's not a big deal if you read The Maidens and then The Silent Patient. Also a note, I liked both books, but I know a lot of people where they really did not like one, but they really did like the other, so just keep that in mind. Next up, I have a really good winter thriller recommendation because it is in the snow and the cover makes it look, it's very snowy, and that is The Writing Retreat, and this is by Julia Bartz. This is a book where a group, a small group of writers are gathered in this, I think it's a mansion, of this very famous writer's house and it doesn't it's kind of haunted house but not particularly which is why it's not in the haunted house category um but a lot of spooky things start happening on this writer's retreat and they are snowed in so if you read all kinds of thrillers during this time definitely recommend this one but if you want to save it to winter when i don't know there's snow on the ground if you get snow then there you go but yeah, I really enjoyed this one too. My most recent thriller read is also probably my favorite thriller of, I hesitate to say of all time, but it might just be. And that is, That's Not My Name. And this is by Megan Lally. So this is a dual POV book. You are following the boyfriend of a girl who goes missing and at this point is starting to be presumed dead but he is determined that she is not dead and he is going to find her especially since everybody blames him and treats him poorly because they think he did something to her and then the other point of view is this girl wakes up she has no idea where she is 
who she is, what's going on, absolutely nothing. And so when she goes to the police station, this man comes and he's like, oh my word, you're my daughter. Here, like, I have your ID, I have your birth certificate, blah, blah, blah. Look, come, let me take you home. Except something feels kind of off about this guy and who he says she is. I could not put this book down. I was constantly, I was listening to the audiobook of it, but I had it on 24 seven until I had this book finished. I just, I enjoyed it so much. I thought the writing was fantastic because I did not see the twist coming, but that's because I was so enraptured in the story. I couldn't even think about what was going to happen because all I could focus on was what was happening now. And then the last book and the kind of just general thriller recommendations, I guess, is Daisy Darker by Alice Feeney. So Feeney, this was a popular like a year or two ago and I am always late to the trend on these things. I never read books when they're popular. I read them after they're popular because I don't want the hype to affect how I think about them. But that also means that my recommendations of these books tend to happen later. So if you're like me and you heard about the hype of this book and you did not get on that train, but now that time has passed, I recommend getting on the train. Um, I really enjoyed this book. You are following this family who their grandmother gathers their them all to her house on this island um, for some like reading of her will or family affair or birthday, something like that. And then she ends up dead. But not of natural causes. So everybody is now trapped on this island trying to figure out what happened to grandma, what's the whole point of everybody being here, and everybody has their own secrets and drama that they are trying to hide, cover up, etc. And so if that is your cup of tea, if you are a knives out kind of person, read this book. Now the second half of this video is going to be more of those haunted house type thrillers because I love haunted house books. So let's get into those then. The first one I have is kind of haunted housey and that is Delicious Monsters and that is by Liesl Sambury. And Delicious Monsters I read like last year. It got a lot of really good reviews when it came out and it makes sense why it got a lot of really good reviews when it came out because it's good. You are following this main character and her mom and they are going to this big house that they can't really afford but has been left to them and the main character sees ghosts. Like she's kind of haunted and going to this house just makes it all the worse and there is a lot between the mother-daughter relationship there but it's also a dual POV book as well and it is a time gap. So years years later you are following another female main character who is returning to what is known as the miracle house because it is the house that her mom had like this major life-changing transformation in and she is going to uncover the secrets of this house what actually happened what's going on and so through these dual povs and timelines we figure out the secrets behind the house and all the spooky things that happen within the next recommendation I have is The Hacienda, and this is by Isabel Cañas, and this was such a good book. It was another one of those where I just could not put it down. I listened to it all in one day because I was just so enraptured of what was going on. So I believe it takes place in Mexico, and our main characters are Latina, and she gets married to this guy and goes to his hacienda you know she's about to start running the household there is her mother-in-law who does not like her and other people in the household but it's not just the challenges of going into this new family who already doesn't really like her but the hacienda is haunted so what you gonna do go busters <laughs> no so again love this book it was like a five star read for me could not put it down just read it, read it. And then the final book I have to recommend is White Smoke and this is by Tiffany D. Jackson. Again, another book that got a ton of hype a couple years ago and it's totally worth the hype. 
you are following your main character who has a bit of a darker past, you know, she's done things that she's not necessarily proud of, uh, but her mom gets married to this guy who also has kids, so they are now becoming a blended family and they move into this picture-perfect home and life appears to be all good, except for the fact that mysterious things happen in the house, things are vanishing, things are breaking, and she's got this troubled past, everybody thinks it's her, but reality? Who knows? So, definitely, again, another really well-written thriller novel. Please read this, so good. But also check for trigger warnings before you go into this, so there you go. And there you have it. Those are all of my thriller recommendations for this spooky season. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Comment down below any of the recommendations you have, as I am still also looking for recommendations of thrillers to read this year. I also have bookish social media links down below, so while you're down there leaving a comment, why not just check those out? And if you like bookish content like this, feel free to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified because I post one to two videos a week, so you want to hit the bell to be notified when those videos go up. Thank you all very much for watching, and until I see you in the next video, happy reading!